I will teach you the secrets to wound cleansers and which ones to stay away from. You will discover which wound cleanser is the right wound cleanser for you. I will reveal to you the good, the bad, and the ugly about wound cleansers. I will tell you my ultimate choice for wound cleanser. I will teach you the which cleansers kill cells, and I will also tell you which cleansers to stay away from. My name is Dr. Casey and Brown. I'm a wound care specialist. I have helped thousands of patients heal their wounds. I have consulted for many nurses, physicians, and ancillary providers alike. So let's get to the gold nuggets. Let's get to the juicy stuff about wounds. First thing, what are wound cleansers? Wound cleansers are solutions. These are solutions that have multiple functions. Number one, they're gonna decrease bacteria by a burden. They're gonna flush the wound. They have surfactants in them, some of the wound cleansers. They're gonna remove foreign debris or exudates. That is the role and function of a wound cleanser. So we do need to use wound cleansers in our daily or how, whatever frequency wound care that we use. So let's discuss the different types of wound cleansers and let's get into the physiology of them. So my tried and true ultimate number one go-to wound cleanser is normal saline. That is the best choice for wound cleanser. You wanna stick with what is tried and true. Normal saline is old Betsy. It has been proven to work. Why? Because that is the solution that's physiologically closest to what our body is made up of. So my number one go-to is normal saline. Normal saline, you use it to clean a wound. Most patients don't have a problem with it. It is tried and true, and it is the best choice for wound cleansers out there. All right, so there are other wound cleansers on the market. When you go in CVS or Walgreens, McKesson, Cardinal, they all have a bottle called wound cleanser. What is this? Those wound cleansers, they're different. They're not like normal saline. They are a solution. They have chemicals in them and they have surfactants in them. What do surfactants do? Surfactants help to lift the bacteria and debris off of the wound. Also, some of them, they have chemicals in them so that way they don't get contaminated and grow bacteria inside of the wound cleanser as well. The problem I have with this is a lot of home health companies and a lot of nurses like this. It's convenient, it's in a spray bottle. However, sometimes you will have a patient who have pain. So as you're cleansing the wound with this wound cleanser spray bottle or this brand, McKesson or Cardinal or CVS brand, they're complaining of pain. They're complaining of pain because they're having a reaction to the chemicals that are in it. So you wanna be careful when you use these brands of wound cleansers on your wound or on your patient. If you wanna know if your wound cleanser has preservatives, turn it over. Just like you do the food label, turn it over. You're gonna see a lot of chemicals with really long names and you're like, I don't really know what those are for. That is the problem. So if the wound cleanser that you're using causes pain, that is not the right wound cleanser for you. You might wanna try something else. Let's talk about Dakin's solution. Dakin's solution, you have quarter strength, half strength, full strength. This is medical bleach. There is even a recipe for it online. Google it, you can make it at home. The pharmacy sells it, it's over the counter. You can ask the pharmacist or whoever's in the pharmacy to guide you to where it is. Dakin's has its uses. However, there's a problem with Dakin's. It is cytotoxic, meaning it kills good cells as well. Most wound care providers move away from Dakin's. I still use Dakin's in my practice, here's why. Sometimes you have a wound that's heavily burdened with bacteria. You need to decrease that bacteria by a burden so that wound can heal. Any wound, it doesn't matter the size of the wound, if it's heavily burdened with bacteria, it's not going to heal. You have to remove the contaminant, you have to remove the bacteria for that wound to heal. So yes, do we use Dakin's? Yes, we do. But Dakin's should be used short term. Dakin's should not be used for more than 14 days at a time. Some wounds, 10 days, some wounds, seven days. It is a case by case basis. And when you use something like Dakin's, you do wanna be under a physician's supervision because they, they're gonna make sure that you're not harming yourself 
more than you were that than you plan on okay next let's talk about hydrogen peroxide a lot of people still use hydrogen peroxide to clean their wounds this is a no-no you want to stay away from hydrogen peroxide it is bad for you it kills cells and it also kills granulating tissue what's granulating tissue that's the new tissue that you're forming so you're using the hydrogen peroxide and you're killing off the new stuff that you're forming so this is one of those wound cleansers you want to stay away from. The only time I will ever use hydrogen peroxide in a wound is if there is old blood or clotted blood and hydrogen peroxide is a good way to get rid of blood. I will use hydrogen peroxide to remove the old blood and then I will cleanse with normal saline, tried and true. You want to leave that wound in the physiologically correct position or the pH, the physiologically correct pH as close as you can. Hydrogen peroxide, that is a no-no. Stay away from it when you're cleansing your wounds. Like I said, only if there's old blood and you're trying to remove the old blood, it can help you. But after that, you do want to rinse with normal saline. You want to be safe. Betadine. Betadine is a tried and true wound cleanser. It is cytotoxic to healthy cells and granulating tissue. Betadine is also antimicrobial. So it's going to kill off the microbes, the bacteria as well. Couple of things you wanna keep in mind with betadine. It is going to stain the tissue brown. So betadine is a brown solution. So if you go back a couple of days later and your wound is looking yellowish to tan brownish, that is normal. That is one of the effects of betadine. It is a staining solution. Betadine has its uses in wound care. It is very good for several wounds. However, you want to keep in mind it is very irritating. So you want to limit what wounds you put it in. Open wounds like open sores, I stay away from betadine. If I have a pressure ulcer on a heel and say it's a closed pressure ulcer but there's a dark discoloration, that is a type of wound I will use betadine on. Betadine is gonna dry it out, it's gonna decrease the bacteria by a burden, and that is exactly what you want for that type of wound. Hippoclens is chlorhexidine. This is surgical scrub. This is the stuff that we use before we go into the OR. It has its uses as well in wound care. However, you have to remember it is antibacterial, but it's irritating. It is very irritating to the wound. So some patients, they will complain of, after a few times of using it, that the wound is burning them, that the wound, the bed doesn't feel good. You wanna be careful. Hibiclens is great stuff for decreasing the bacteria by a burden. But once again, you don't wanna cleanse a wound with Hibiclens and then not rinse it off. It's medical soap, right? You wanna go ahead, if you clean a wound with Hibiclens, you're using it to decrease bacteria by a burden. That makes sense. But you're gonna have to rinse that off. It's like bathing with Dove soap and not rinse it off. You don't want to do that. That's going to set your wound up for irritation and you don't want that. Also, you want to use this under a physician supervision. Acetic acid. This is vinegar. This is simple stuff. This is tried and true. This has been used for many centuries. So before we developed all these fancy wound cleansers, plain acetic acid is what was used. It's inexpensive and everybody has access to it. Am I telling you to use vin vinegar? No. However, it is a wound cleanser. Vinegar is good in certain occasions. For example, vinegar, it causes irritation. You have to keep that in mind. But certain bacteria like Staph aureus, MRSA, Pseudomonas, and other gram-negative bacteria, vinegar will help to decrease that bacteria by a burden. Once again, you want to be under a physician supervision. There are many wound care practitioners or providers who are board certified and they stay away from vinegar because they're like, oh, it's too much of a risk and that is okay. However, when you go into the more rural populations, they use acetic acid or vinegar a lot. So keep that in mind. The next one I want to talk about is Vashi Wound Cleanser. This wound cleanser is amazing. It is not something your health insurance will cover, so you'll have to buy it, pay for it out of pocket. 
But what Vashi does is hypochloric acid, so it's like Dakin's. However, it is not cytotoxic. It doesn't kill off any cells. So you can have something that can decrease your bio burden, decrease the bacteria that's in your wound, doesn't kill off cells, mimics the normal pH, it is safe, it is effective. We use Vashi a lot on our wound care patients or patients with more infected wounds. The problem with Vashi, insurance doesn't cover it, and it does cost a pretty penny. You could find it on Amazon, you could find it, I believe it's on walmart.com. If you type it in V-A-S-H-E, you could find it. It's a little blue bottle, you can't go wrong. However, cost is the biggest limiting factor to Vashi. So keep that in mind. If you can't afford it, it is okay. Go with one of the other wound cleanser because there's so many options out there for you that you can get multiple choices and you can choose the right one for you. I hope this content is to your liking. Don't forget to share if you think someone can benefit from this information. Thank you so much for listening to my video. Don't forget, pay attention to my next video we're gonna talk about venous wounds.